both in the east and the west the impulse towards philosophic enquiry arose out of the perception of the wonder of creation look at the sun and the moon and the stars the sky above all which defy our understanding we are under the impression that we are seated on this earth actually you are all now moving in a space ship which you have not thought of during your day to day life you know the planet earth is rattling around empty space that is why i said you are in a veritable space ship just now you are in the middle of space is it not a wonderful thing to think you are not on this earth sitting cozily on a solid surface as if you are stationary and everything is there moving for your wonderment and perception of mystery the structure of this creative or creational phenomenon really passes understanding what precision in the working of nature what system what beauty and what breath taking profundity if you are only able to find time to think over these matters what are these stars how are they hanging in space why does not the sun fall on our head without any support in the empty space and nothing seems to have a support anywhere in this world everything is moving but not helter skelter the movement is methodical harmonious systematic beautiful and utter mathematical precision is the way we can describe this wonder of what you call this creation it is necessary for us to find a little time to think like this look at the sky a very the sky you are in the sky why should you look up to the sky as the sky is above you you are in sky in the middle of empty space what do you feel when you hear all these things for a moment your breathing will stop i am moving for which way rapidly through space as if i am under in a pilgrimage around empty space there is nothing stationary in this world this you will observe by a careful noticing of what is happening in nature and nothing is stationary right from the atom to the galaxies movement and movement and movement what movement towards what there cannot be a movement without a direction but towards what are you moving we are likely to think like little children that the movement is linear as if there is a beaten track a road leading to delhi it is not like that 
it is not a straight line movement if it is not that kind of movement what other kind of movement can you conceive in your mind two great wonders are observed by a careful investigation into the nature of things the impossibility of understanding what is all this around us the other one is the impossibility to know how we are alive at all do you go to bed and you are asleep everything is silenced but the heart does not sleep the breath does not sleep why do they not sleep if you are sleeping have you any say in this matter you are a free bird we are all independent persons we ask for freedom we are not bound to anything we are totally free what kind of freedom are you exercising in the operation of the lungs and the heart or your brain are you contributing anything as an individual to the function of this magic structure of this psychophysical organism have you thought over this matter these considerations lead to a deep questioning spirit into the realm of what you generally call philosophy i told you in ancient times wonderment was the beginning of this enquiring spirit it was so in greece it was so in india there must be something which is controlling this mathematically precise activity of the universe you cannot say anything is unintelligent or dead everything is perfect utterly clear the movement of the planets and the stellar system is so wonderfully precise that you can predict today if an eclipse is going to take place 100 years afterwards what kind of arrangement is this from a theorem you come to a corollary from a basic proposition you come to a conclusion you may call it mathematics you may call it logic how can you know that 100 years ahead or 200 years ahead there will be an eclipse of the moon or the sun it is the wonder of mathematics which is the brother or alter ego of physics including astrophysics who is responsible for all uh, this wonderment inside as well as outside have you as a person individually contributed anything to this wonder you seem to be a helpless cog in the wonderful movement of the wheel of this clock of creation you are self assertion that you are a very important person in this creational panorama gets subdued a little bit 
<coughs> your ego is slowly tending towards extinguishing itself before the might and the magnificence of creation there are two kinds of wonder one is the wonder of beauty another is the wonder of sublimity if you look at the clear full moon on a clean sky go on looking at this beautiful moon you will not like to take your eye away from that <coughs> round soft beaming with the nectarine rays how beautiful how beautiful how beautiful is the blossoming rose this is a small example of your feeling towards beauty your aesthetic sense is roused by the perception of what you regard as beautiful why does a thing look beautiful is a different subject we shall look into it later later on apart from the perception of beauty there is another thing the perception of sublimity you see a huge elephant standing on the road you like to see it again and again look at it what for are you looking at it you do not going to give you anything but you would not like to take your eye away from that elephant elephant oh elephant we go to the shore of the ocean where the mighty waves are dashing this way and that way look at the ocean you are fear struck you are wonder struck you are awe struck at the magnificence of the ocean which terrifies you and puts your ego down you look so small before the mighty waves of the tremendous incomparable mass of ocean before the elephant also you look very small you cannot go near it why do you admire the elephant because the mightier and larger is the compass of what you see the smaller is the ego at that time of yours the lesser is the feeling of your self assertive nature the greater is your appreciation of sublimity of anything the greater is your self assertion and egoism the less you know anything of the world in the perception of beauty you lose yourself for the time being in a kind of attunement as if you are embracing it making it your own and you are other than beautiful personality is imbued with the beauty of that which you call beautiful if you yourself are equally beautiful as the one which you are looking at as beautiful you will not enjoy that beauty there is something lacking in you which is compensated by that object which you regard as beautiful what is lacking in you let the philosopher professors tell you beauty is an aesthetic completion of your personality in a type of perception which is unique by itself sublimity i mentioned to you is another kind you wonder at the perception of a beautiful thing 
and the wonder is such that you cannot say anything about it. A wondrous architectural presentation, a beautiful sculpture, a marvelous painting of Michelangelo or Ravi Varma, a wondrous music and great literature. Like Shakespeare's or Milton's or Mahabharata or Ramayana. You are taken out of yourself. You become something more than other than yourself. Architecture, sculpture, painting, drawing, music, literature. These are forms of aesthetic beauty. You go on looking at it again and again and you are not tired of seeing it. The lover like the beloved, the beloved like the lover. There is no meaning behind it because it transcends meaning. Here logic and equation will not work because finally the world does not seem to be made out of mathematics and logic. It is a super mathematical and super logical surpassing presentation before us. The only word we can use to explain this situation is wonder, wonder, wonder. From where all this has come then? Philosophic and query comments. This is how ancient philosophy was started. But in modern times, skepticism and doubt seems to be the beginning of philosophical empire. A scientist does not take anything for granted. Things may not be as they appear. It may not be like this, it may be otherwise. It is doubtful whether our perceptions are really genuine or valid. Science advances because the earlier discoveries are set aside by newer discoveries. So what was considered as a final statement earlier is now considered as redundant and you have a new perception. Where do you end then with this kind of advance in scientific understanding? Doubt everything. What I am thinking now also may not be free from a doubtful involvement. The world may not be in front of me, really speaking, I may be under the illusion. I may not be thinking correctly. Some genie might have entered my brain and is perhaps compelling me, compelling me to think entirely in a wrong way. I may be having a topsy-turvy perception. Nothing is certain. Everything is doubtful. One of the philosophers went along these lines of investigation. The world may not be there. What is the proof that the world is there? I myself may not be there. How can I prove that I am here? Let me doubt the world. Let me doubt people around me. Let me doubt myself also. You cut the ground under your own feet and you cannot stand anywhere. Skepticism begins its argument in this manner. But it is many a time 
loses its maneuvering direction and steering and does not know what it is saying if your statement is doubtful the fact that it appears to be doubtful also may be doubtful what are you talking this question arose in the mind of a great king or of the west once upon a time he was called rene descartes but i am some who thinking who is thinking is great dictum was cogito ergo sum i think therefore i am he made a mistake in this statement you are not because you are thinking you think because you are existing it is other way around if you are not there the thinking will not be there why do you say i think therefore i am you should say i am therefore i think is a point which is scored by the eastern thought over this kind of western thinking i have to be there in order that doubts may be valid doubt cannot doubt itself the doubter has to be there in order that doubts may be valid the doubter's existence cannot be doubted all right let us accept that the doubter is there else doubt cannot be there we are not entering into a mental hospital to cut everything the branch on which we are sitting and cut off our thought itself and endeavor to cut ourselves also such a thing is not possible wisdom was there behind this skeptical approach i have to be there but what kind of i is there i think that means to say i am conscious there is no such thing as unconscious feeling of one's own existence the feeling of one's existence is a conscious affirmation of being so i am because if i am not my investigations and my doubts also vanish simultaneously so i have to be but what kind of i am where am i if i separate all accretions involved in this consciousness of i am and keep only the bare principle of i am you will see that there will be nothing left except a your feeling and awareness of your being i am conscious that i am you cannot say anything else about anything else because already you have set aside the validity of there being anything outside the consciousness of your being all right let me go deeper into this question i am conscious that i am generally in studies of psychology and epistemology consciousness is defined as that which is conscious of something other than itself there must be something of which consciousness should be conscious otherwise where is the meaning of consciousness what are you conscious of there is an object of consciousness this is how we generally think in ordinary parlance 
but here the object has gone it has become an object of doubt and it may be there it may not be there at all the only doubtless thing is that i am and this i am see can cannot be anything else but just the feeling a feeling which is identical with awareness a consciousness a startling conclusion who am i very hesitatingly you say i seem to be only consciousness of being where is this consciousness city has it any location abruptly glibly like a little child you will answer due to the affirmation of this physical body that consciousness is within me how can it be within anything that which is only within is certainly not without when you say consciousness is within me you are indirectly assuming that it is not without who is telling you that consciousness is not without only consciousness has to say that consciousness says i am inside i am not outside the outsideness has to become a content of consciousness be attend attend you to what i am saying the outsideness has to become a content of consciousness you know do that consciousness may feel that it is not outside it has to transcend its withiness and gallop outside the boundary of this body and feel itself in some other place where it is denying itself at the same time think over this matter deeply the consciousness that it is only inside and not outside is not possible unless the consciousness is at the same time outside so that it may be conscious that it is not outside very carefully you must meditate on this matter what does this mean finally it is not inside because if you say it is inside you are creating great trouble for yourself because in denying its absence outside you are virtually asserting its presence because the denial of a thing is not possible unless the denial has already become a content of the denying consciousness thus it means consciousness is not only inside it is outside us the outside has no limit it is an endless expanse so what does it mean this i consciousness seems to be an endless expanse of being as such what do you call this consciousness in indian philosophical circles this consciousness is called atman in the sanskrit language again don't make the mistake of saying atman is inside the body because the idea of insideness has been ruled out because of the impossibility of that assumption if the atman is not at the same time outside also it is the pure selfhood or the assertion of pure subjectivity that is designated by the word atman in sanskrit language in english we call it self in as much as it is everywhere as it has been now discovered by a little analysis it is brahman at the same time 
the self is the absolute because it is also inside you it is the pure subjectivity of yours it is called the self or the atman because it is not merely inside you but everywhere it is a universal plenum of completion in sanskrit we call it brahman call it the absolute be this is where we are led to by our critical examination we started with the doubt whether we go with the wonderment of creation or the conclusions of a skeptical outlook in philosophy you seem to be landing yourself on the lap of a common uniform conclusion eastern thinking has been mostly intuitional and universal western thinking has always been empirical individual and limited to the reports of the sense organs the perception of qualities we call primary and secondary these qualities which you see in the things of the world secondary qualities which directly impinge upon our senses like color sound etc and primary qualities like geometrical shape and the very structure of the existence of an object these phenomena are the starting point of western thinking empiricism is the foundation of most of western thinking i do not say it is everywhere so but mostly it is so inductive method is more predominant in the west the deductive system is predominant in the east something is finally taken for granted as unavoidable that is the beginning of deduction and from this unavoidable acceptance of there being some truth you deduce certain conclusions from the general you come to the particular but the western way is to go from the particular to the general when you say that the observation of certain events in the world which are to ordinary perception distinct particulars when you see these particulars you behold a the reality around them you are actually following an inductive method it is not that the inductive method is absent in eastern thought philosophy and religion have always been inseparable in the east but in the west religion stood apart and philosophy took a purely scientific term especially in the modern period wherever you move whether through the inductive process or the 
deductive process you seem to be landing at a particular point go farthest into the remotest point of empty space go as far as possible to the circumference that limits entire space if at all there is such a circumference you will find that you are back like a boomerang on the very point you started with the innermost depth becomes identical with the most exterior depth of scientific observation the farthest becomes the nearest the most objective becomes the greatest of subjectivities where you begin to feel a commingling of the observer and the observed whereby you will at the same time notice that all observation involves the activity of the observer you cannot stand apart as an observer and keep observation outside in a laboratory and have the object of observation still further away the observing spirit the observational process and the object of observation seem to have a common ground and unless you stand on that ground you will not know either yourself or the process of observation or the object that is observed by pure scientific experimental or observational methods nothing can be known finally in its core because you as a scientist try to stand outside the object forgetting that your very attempt to know the object conditions the nature of the observation and the very structure of the object so you will not know anything unless you know everything it comes to that final the philosophical conclusions therefore of both the east and the west meet at a common point and it is not always true that the east is west and west is west and twain shall never meet though it is said so it is not always like that we feel now that the farthest point of the bearing strait such as the farthest corner of alaska if you see on a map they are so far away the bearing strait connect them together the world is round and not flat so is perception it is a rotund process it is a circular arrangement where you cannot know which is the beginning and which is the end in a circle there is no beginning and there is no end the beginning is the end the end is the beginning the commencement is the goal the goal is the commencement here we bring together western adventure and eastern intuition so by being a true philosopher not a, just a fundamentalist or a parochial linguistic theoretician 
is you are broad enough to think in this manner you will see you are a citizen of the world not of india of europe america of this country that country the winds of the cosmos blow through our hearts you are not a citizen of merely this human earth you seem to be lifted to the galaxies to the cosmic space and you are a citizen of the universe what are the prerogatives and the liberties of a citizen he is fully protected the citizen is fully protected by the laws wherein and whereby he is the citizen if you are a citizen of the universe the universe will protect you you are guarded from all sides you are never without a friend and you have no enemies because the world has come round into a point of singular observation of a totality of awareness you may call this the most wonderful humanistic way of perception the universal united nations that we have created or perhaps god himself has entered your heart and taken possession of you all these wonderful conclusions are before you by a totally dispassionate and very into the nature of things which is what you call philosophy god bless you hari om tat sat parve de